It's part 7 of the Toulouse abridged campaign. Last time, we auto-resolved our way across all of the rest of the Muslim-controlled part of Iberia. We also sneakily started taking some of the Christian-controlled part as well, luckily no one really noticed. And after a long time, we gradually got everything calmed down in terms of public order. And now we're starting our next bit of the campaign, we're going to attack various coastal settlements down in Africa. We've already taken Algiers, as you may recall. But here, things are getting a bit dangerous. An army from the Almohad Caliphate is coming up from the south, and we're already actually under siege by the local rebel faction, the Marinid Pretenders. I thought I could hold out against those rebels. But with this full stack of enemy troops coming in as well, I figured we're probably going to lose this settlement. So we might as well not lose the army. We can use the port to just immediately leave and go back to our own port. That's pretty nice, isn't it? So now Algiers will just function as a distraction. They can waste time taking it again, as we've let them do before. And we'll just come back to it later. It'll probably end up undefended at some point. I can't actually recruit any good units at Mercia, annoyingly. But I'm going to use Granada, which has the castle-type settlement, to recruit a ton of spear sergeants and chevalier and things to make a new army to deal with that later. Meanwhile, to the west, we've got some other business to attend to. The king just died. Luckily, it didn't have any major effect on the politics by the looks of things. I think we actually spawned a new king as well. It forcibly married one of the king's daughters to someone. And that guy's now the king. Lucky guy. So anyway, we still got more to do with the politics to sort that completely out, but we're out of the danger zone overall. With our siege of Fez, we get some good luck, because as I finish all of my siege equipment, this half stack of enemy troops that was contributing to the defense sails off, so actually this is the perfect time to attack. It's slightly less well defended. We've also had the place under siege for like four turns or something, which is enough to guarantee a breach in the wall due to the degradation of the settlement. So that'll act as another piece of siege equipment in effect. And we are going to need it, as you'll see. It's two stacks on both sides, and I'm not going to bother waiting for my stack of reinforcements. I'm going to start off by just going right for it. There's some incentive to rush the town because a lot of the enemy troops are in a navy. They're not going to land for a while, so we've got some time while the enemy are a bit weaker to rush forwards. Our second army will even arrive well before their second army. We're having some trouble here on the north side of town because it turns out in this map the Bastion catapults aren't glitched, so we can't rely on that. We need to get our troops off of these siege weapons because the catapult can only target our men, so if the men are far enough away from the siege pieces, the catapult won't destroy them, they'll kill a few of our men, then we just come back once it's out of ammo. Meanwhile, our rush against this eastern wall encounters a major flaw. Our siege towers appear to have been built with a bit of miscommunication, and we just can't use them. They're way too big, very awkward, and now our troops actually just climb down them and we can't go in. Luckily, that breach in the wall comes into play now. It's just over to the right. So we're going to form up in front of that and try to push in that way instead. We've also got some ladders we can use. We have a ram as well, but this ram isn't going to have much success. I'm pushing it into a gate that has a full unit of archers on the gatehouse, and those archers are just going to annihilate my spears on the ram. So that's not happening, but the ladders are getting into position all the while. As for this breach, I thought this would be okay, I thought we could push through, because it was defended by some slingers and some horse archers. But, in another case of things having good melee defense, we're not making any progress, we couldn't kill them. That's just going to be a nice blobby grind then, and we'll have to hope we can get through eventually. Our ladders are also too big, but luckily, <laughs> the guys are willing to just make the drop off the top and fall onto the ramparts of the wall, where there they'll be engaging some archers. Their second army is now facing off against my second army here at the beach. We're going to have a battle of the second armies where they're just going to cancel each other out to the side. Our main goal here is to stop their second army going into the town. For that, we're just doing this formation, a massive long line on the beach. Just get everything occupied so they can't participate in the fight. These fights won't be particularly advantageous to us, but it will help out. They did have one unit that's already got past us, but I'm just going to send some cav to take them out. Now back on the walls, we've got some bad news. The Volge militia I sent over that tall ladder are getting annihilated. They haven't even killed a single one of this archer unit. This archer unit is definitely unbalanced. This is the alpha of the mod, but basically it doesn't appear to work. They just don't die even against our melee units. You'd think we'd get at least one, 
and it's a similar deal with all these slingers and horse archers. We can't break through this breach and we're losing men quite fast because some archers are shooting into our blob as well. Nasty stuff. However, the Battle of the Second Army's plan has worked. We've got all their stuff locked down into this enormous brawl right across the beach. The only thing that will really help us here is a lot of their troops in the Second Army are crossbows and they're being forced into melee right away. So we should have some more favourable melees, but then again, I thought the same thing about our Vuj troops and the enemy's archers. Here we are a minute or so later when things are starting to go well on the beach. The enemy do take losses and I'm setting up ready to kill them as they rout by stopping them from running down the beach towards the edge of the map. As for our breach assault, we are not making any progress still. The enemy have lost a few slingers there and they pulled the slingers defending the breach back but they had swords instead now so it's only getting harder. Their archers have killed a lot of my knights waiting outside the walls as well. However the ladders have finally found some success, we've cleared away the enemy's archers in the area, now they can come in to start getting behind the breach to help. This unit of spears was going to capture that gate but I realise that's pointless, they're just going to get shot to death by the archers. We don't need that gate anyway. All we want to do on this side of the map is finish off the enemy's second army and then stand here so the portion of the first army manning the walls is stuck looking at us while the rest of our first army can clear everything else up deeper into the town. Starting to see some nice routes there. As the enemy's second army troops try to leave they should get killed which is perfect because as reinforcements they won't get killed automatically. Meanwhile at the breach with our troops now coming around from the ladder zone Unfortunately, we still have to take basically an even trade with our swords against their archers and slingers in the melees. But we have enough men to push through and actually get rid of them even with unfavourable melees going on or surprisingly unfavourable ones. Moving on then, we get to the point when the second army is pretty much dead. We've won that and the balance bar says we've won this battle really. Just need to finish things off, looks like we've broken through those archers and slingers. Just the last couple of units to kill and then we'll finally be through that breach. Here we are when it's down to just some archers, although not just any archers, it's magic enemy archers who are going to hold up my blob for a while, but we do have enough stuff to kill them this time. As for what they have left, to get to where we are they have to go around the outside of the town due to the position of barricades, and I'm going to use my magic crossbows on our side to hold the enemy back. We'll just fight them in melee with our mysterious melee defense abilities and they won't be able to get through, thus delaying them while we send most of our troops over to the capture point. They did have one unit of spears defending it, it's their leader, the leader of the garrison army that is. We hit them with a few shots, absorb that charge onto our crossbows, and now they're in trouble because we can hit them from all sides with a few bolts at first and then a cap and infantry charge gonna have our crossbows go. Start taking that capture point to get the timer going. The cav charge in, this is always a questionable moment, I'm not really sure yet in this mod what effect cav charges have on spears but in this case it is good enough we take them down and that's the end of that and really that's the end of the battle because after we start capturing the point all of the remaining enemy units chain route and we don't even have to finish the capture that's that then we'll end the battle and take our win a very messy one and our first army was very heavily damaged by that messy assault but we didn't lose any units and in attila logic that means you didn't lose anything technically whereas the enemy took extreme losses, they lost almost everything, a couple of units escape from the second army, but basically we're in business here. Fez is a nice capture as well, it's got a whole bunch of leveled up buildings. They're all destroyed now so we're not making that much money, but once this place is repaired it will be our most valuable settlement by far, although those repairs are all going to be nice and expensive because of the buildings having high level. So it will take a while and of course public order is going to be an enormous issue, we'll have to sit around with a full stack there to control it. But that doesn't mean we can't still move on because our second army is in really good condition after that fight, they absolutely annihilated the enemy's landing troops as it turned out. And now we can come down to Marrakech and actually start the siege this turn, we can move all the way beating the enemy's fleet that was trying to sail there, we'll make some equipment and get this going as well. This turned out to be a good decision because just after I arrived, so do the Portuguese and the Aragonese on ships. And now that they're here, this siege is super easy. So we can just auto resolve this. Looks like we've got a whole load of Portuguese crossbowmen helping us out once again. And they can die for us in this fight, effectively giving us Marrakesh for free. There we go then, we've immediately completed my initial campaign objectives for this little push into Africa. It was super easy and now it's going to cause another period of doing nothing because 
Both Marrakesh and Fez need a lot of work to stop them rebelling the second we move our forces out, and we need to make new forces to basically come and occupy them, so that our actual vanguard armies can move out. This is going to take quite a long time, so now we'll skip to, like, I don't know, 10 turns later, about half an hour of the game later, when we're nearly at the point when we can get on with this. Fez and Marrakesh are somewhat repaired, and they're somewhat stable, but they do still both need stacks, but I've recruited more armies, as you can see, to the north. I've got my stack of trash here as well, under our king for some reason, who will come down to garrison Fez for a bit, and we've got a couple of actual armies who are going to come and join the next part of our push across Africa. I want to go to Algiers again, and this time, perhaps for the third or fourth time, I've lost count, we're going to actually try and take it and hold it. I'm going to start moving right now, even though it means I can't move my two armies together. We like to do things a little bit riskier just for fun. The Marinid Pretenders have converted it away from being a Norwegian-style settlement at last, so they will have a garrison and stuff, but that's fine. The regular Marinids are currently sitting on the road to the east of Marrakesh, waiting around and raiding us occasionally. They're going to be another thing we want to do. We want to move east out of Marrakesh if we can, but right now we can't because of public order. You might note I am wasting my king by having him lead the trash stack, and the actual reason is I just don't care enough to change him into being one of our vanguard leaders, which would be better for us politically. He also dies as we get to the next turn, so now our king isn't leading the trash stack as it turns out. I don't think it had any effect on politics, that's just what I'm checking here. Need to spam some more offices and stuff to make sure we can get a tiny bit more power. I want to try and get to the middle if I can, but as I mentioned earlier, I'm at the point where I don't care that much what happens. So we'll just see what happens with that, if anything happens at all. As for the Marinish Pretenders, it looks like they've moved all of their units towards Palma, and now they're right outside the docks. So that's a bit of a risk. I thought maybe I could swoop in and besiege Algiers this turn to bring them back. However, we don't quite have enough movement points. Still, me coming and standing here might alert the AI and might save Palma from being attacked by sea or something. We're also now ready to move out of Marrakesh because the trash deck can move in. We're getting huge public order debuffs from religion here, but I've recruited our two allowed priests to stand there and do the conversion, and once you have priests there, you can actually convert places pretty fast, and they provide an absolutely massive public order bonus. We've got some trouble near Algiers though, because the Almohads, who have one region down to the southeast of us now, a very rich region as it turns out, have got loads of troops, and they've sent them over here to attack my leading force. It's about two armies split between three stacks, we just fall back and they don't pursue, so we've skipped that battle for now, but we're going to come right back to it. As for the Marinid Pretenders, one stack landed on Palma as if they're going to do something, the other one's still in the sea. Not really sure what's going on there, but as it happens, I had prepared another army near Merkia. Originally, they were going to sail across and attack Algiers again, but since Palma seems to potentially be under threat, I thought we'll just do that instead. They can sit in Palma, and now there's pretty much no way the Marinids can take it. As for the Almohad situation, my backup army now arrives following behind the vanguard and we can do this. Our two armies engage there, effectively two armies, and it's a pretty even battle we've got here. Time for a nice decisive field engagement. It looks like the enemy's composition has relied very heavily on crossbows, of course, whereas we are relying more on spear sergeants. So how this goes very much depends on the distance between the two sides as the majority of the fighting happens. We're going to want to run at them. We get this good position as I form up near the enemy, with my left flank defended by some cliffs and the right flank by the red line of death. On the far left, I'm going to have all these cav go and attack the enemy's right because I was pretty confident that their melee line was just the little bit I could see in front of me and their archer line extended way out to the edge of the battlefield, so we're just going to go for that with the cav. In the centre, the enemy did come towards me, which was quite nice because I'm in a good position. I sort of wanted them to come and attack me. But on the other hand, if I just stand here, they're going to have like double our ranged unit count, so we're probably not going to do all that well in a skirmish. With that in mind, we'll want to move in a second, but because they started charging with some cav units first, we're going to stand still and have the main line in the shield wall formation to see if we can grab a few kills early on. Our cav are going in on the left, hoping to see no real resistance once we get into that forest. And we're going to do something similar on the right. I've got my cav behind this little ridge, and they can go forwards into that forest in front of them where we just saw there's an, at least one enemy unit hiding, a crossbow unit in particular. Those early cav raids pretty much turned out to be nothing. Most of the time they just went back again. So it's time to run forwards. 
we're in a good situation because there's a line of trees and a little ridge between our melee line and the enemy's crossbow line so we can run at them without taking a whole load of fire. Meanwhile, the main thing I'm doing is microing these flanks. We need our vast cav advantage to come into play. First, on the left, we're going to have an easy fight because these woods were packed with crossbows and slingers that are totally isolated from the rest of the enemy army. Not sure why they were out there, but they should be killed soon enough. In the center, there's going to be this huge, real messy engagement where the melee lines from both sides sort of clash. We do have an advantage in that we have like double the enemy's melee troops. So that's okay, but obviously I'm not paying very close attention to what, what's actually happening there. We need to just sweep in on the flanks. On the right flank, things are starting to go well. So with both flanks now looking like they're going to be victorious and our cav mainly fighting enemy ranged infantry, we can spend a bit of time sorting this mess in the center out. On our center right and right wing in general, we win those melees quite fast so we can start folding troops in. Looks like the battle in the forest to the left is just about won, so gradually those cav can come back and help. Our left end of the melee line is the worst part of the fight, because the enemy are just running away and drawing us forwards, we're going to end up being skirmished to death unless we can catch them against the edge of the map, that is, it depends which direction the enemy run and how many different directions they run at once in particular. Things are going well on the right though, with our cav now freed up, they can also begin sweeping in to participate in the battle. That group mainly goes in to help with the fight in the forest and our melee infantry, whereas the group from the left was going to help out with our men who are now totally overextended on our center left. They were distracted though by a few enemy units who appeared in the way, so the help was a little bit slow in actually coming into effect. At least things are now sorted out in the center basically, you can see I've now surrounded everything. Our numerical advantage means these melees will go our way eventually even though we're killing the enemy slowly. We're going to get morale advantages all over the place and with a few units of cap helping out as well that should be no problem. And the things on the left are now starting to have some effect. We catch up to some of the enemy units and join in the little fights, clearing them up fast before the enemy's remaining ranged units gun us down over time. With that, we split all the units up to go and get all of the rest of the ranged units into melee. And the fight is won, the balance part certainly seems to think so. A while later, we start seeing some chain routes, and that is going to be the end of that. This is a fight where we need to chase them down, since about half the enemy troops were reinforcements, and there's no way of knowing which ones they were. So, for good measure, we'll hunt down and kill as many units as possible to make this fight extra decisive. A quick glance at the unit cards there tells us that we've lost basically nothing in this fight, so whatever the result, we're coming out on top. Looks like the enemy can phase into other dimensions though, and that unit was just about saved from being cav charged by that secret ability. Still, this does not save their army as a whole. We lost no units, and we barely had any units even be damaged, that was an absolute stomp for some reason. And the enemy got crushed. I guess relying on all crossbows really doesn't work when I can just bring in 10 units of cav and sort that out relatively quickly. However, the action here isn't over because those two hostile armies are in reinforcement range of Algiers, and because Algiers is hostile to us as well, we can actually use this for a siege drawout. I messed it up at first because my second army isn't close enough to this battle, so by sending in just one army, we actually get a roughly balanced engagement, and that's not what we want here. I was pretty sure there was some way to get both of my armies in and also get the siege draw out, and I just have to stand at a specific place that intersects a couple of different zones of control there. And we end up with this fight, that looks more like it. Now you might think I need to do that manually to get the siege draw out going, but auto resolves are pretty generous, when you have a giant advantage like that it just kills everything on the enemy side. So we hit the auto resolve and the garrison is totally dead, it just says they have some bastion catapults there which don't count, meaning we move into Algiers this turn and we don't have to do a siege and just auto resolve them next turn basically. Handy stuff, as for the effect on the Marinid pretenders, well it actually makes them stronger because their two armies turn into hordes so they can now recruit units and probably get more money. Overall then that's not ideal, but still they don't have a chance of taking Palma with my full stack sitting in there so it's fine. Algiers isn't the best settlement, it's been wrecked by someone, I forget who it was precisely, so we need to upgrade and level it all up again, but we'll get to that later. In the meantime, we do have some other business to attend to. I had an army moving east from Marrakesh and they encounter the Marinid Sultanate who were just raiding away here, and I thought we might as well just kill these guys. So here we go, a decisive battle where 
It's actually kind of similar to the last fight we just saw, but it's a scaled down version. It's another case where the enemy have way too many ranged units, so we're just going to take a small look at this battle. Essentially, I move in with Cav on both sides and immediately engage all of these exposed slingers and start killing them. Meanwhile, in the center, we just run at them, and even with the few troops we have running at them, we already have a melee advantage. So once our Cav sweep in and annihilate the enemy's ranged advantage, we'll then also have the Cav advantage and they'll be behind the enemy. So yeah, just like in the last battle, we can get a slaughter going. Just need to micro things to get it going faster. And once again, the enemy's surprisingly good slinger in melee stats will hold us back. We're not just absolutely sweeping through and crushing them. But actually, our melee troops are probably enough to sweep through and crush this army on their own at this stage, so it doesn't matter. A while later, we pick up a chain round. I think we killed their general just before as well. And that's that, we've slaughtered everything. This army is not reinforcement, so we don't have to do the route phase. But we are going to have to kill them again after this because some units do survive. We'll take on the captives, or ransom the captives that is, to try and get some poke points. And you can see I immediately check for the poke points here, I was like, come on, like me more. I really want to get some buffs from the presence of Christianity since we need to be spreading that stuff anyway. And as I said, we go on to attack the Marinus Ultimate again, and down they go. Can't remember how many times we've actually defeated the Marinus Ultimate now, maybe that's the second time only, maybe the third time. But we've won another war with them. This stack was going to continue off to the east to go find the other Almohad Caliphate town, but I thought, we're going to take attrition the whole way, let's bring them back up towards Algiers instead. This did freeze the game for a while, but it came back after that. Now, just a couple of items of business to clear up, really. First, the Marinid pretenders on Palma get annihilated. One army stayed, the other army sailed off somewhere, so who knows where they're going, but the guys who stayed are killed by my force. Then I sent my two armies at Algiers to go south and attack that Almohad town I just mentioned. They could reach it in one turn, so this was easy enough. They didn't have any troops and we easily auto-resolved them to death. We have the option though to do a subjugation. I was pretty interested in this because it saves me a lot of trouble having to sort this place out. The thing is, it subjugates the Almohad, so now we have a Muslim faction as our own vassal. Perhaps the Pope will be angry with that. But it comes with a very nice and a very large perk. That being that the Hafsid Sultanate, who were vassals of the Caliphate, are now our vassals by the logic of how the game's rules on vassal ships work. That being that if you vassalize someone, their vassals also become your vassals, meaning we technically vassalized a whole bunch of regions at once there, which I was not expecting, so that's a nice surprise. Saves me having to go and kill these people, really, because they're the next logical target. Now they're on my side by the looks of things, and they're paying me money. A quick look at the diplomatic status map shows that we've kind of won right here. We're allied to virtually everyone around us, including our natural enemies, so that's quite nice. In fact, they're vassalized to us, so that's even better. I'm pretty sure if this was a regular campaign where allied territories and vassal territories count towards your victory objectives, we'd have seen a you've won screen by now because we quote unquote control about half the map through our allies. But anyway, aside from that, I didn't want to just end this campaign because we've sort of won at this point. We could auto resolve our way across Africa if we really wanted, but I didn't. Instead, as you can see, I'm like, hmm, the Papal States. And I noted the Papal States don't have any allies, meaning we can invade Italy and take the Pope for ourselves. So basically, that'll be the next phase of the campaign. I am going to stir up some trouble with the Christians instead. So join me next time to see how that goes.